to study today, or look at, we got it up here, okay, is uh, we're going to take a break from Proverbs and look at baptism, because I didn't know what the weather was, I anticipated, and I wanted to make sure we understand what baptism is, so uh, Ellie is going to be baptized, Lord willing, in a week now, but it was going to be this afternoon, so I wanted to make sure we all understand what baptism is. And so, uh, so I'm using the catechism, the children's catechism. We're on question 73, so I've got to jump about 50 questions ahead. Uh, but I thought this would be a great way to do it. Now, I used to say this to kids all the time, but I don't teach the adults as often, so let me be clear about it. When we talk about catechism, it's like if I went up to Motor City, also known as kids, Detroit, Rock City, okay? And also known as Hockey Town. I don't see David Haney, but he would, he would understand what I'm getting at there, but if I went up there to watch a hockey game, because the greatest hockey team around is up there, uh, I would need a map to know how to get around Detroit. I don't know Detroit at all, right? And so a map, guys, uh, as long as it corresponds to reality, is a great helpful thing. I could go to Detroit for a year and make my own map, couldn't I? It would take a while, but I could do that. Or I could find a trustworthy source that has a map that helps me to know what Detroit is. And as long as it corresponds to reality, it's pretty helpful, isn't it? Now, if I get a, a map that's labeled Detroit, but it's actually Chicago, okay, is that map going to be helpful? No. no. And if the map doesn't correspond to reality, what's wrong? The map or reality? Map. The map. See, this is what catechisms are, guys. Catechisms are maps of the Bible. We can study the Bible uh, for the rest of our lives and develop and understand all, you know, what the Bible teaches us, or we can find trustworthy sources called catechisms that teach us what the Bible, uh, what we believe the Bible teaches. And so that's what we do with the catechism. Now, if the catechism doesn't match up with the Bible, reality, which one's wrong? The catechism. The catechism. Very good. And I say that because when we talk about baptism, guess what, guys? Christians disagree. Of course. Okay? And so this is how our understanding of what baptism is. And we don't say that to try to be divisive with Christians who disagree. But we want to be clear about we, what we as Baptists teach and believe in. We want you kids to understand it. So the question is this. What is baptism? Okay? you got to click on it, I think. Oh, sorry. Exactly. All right. Here it is. This is the definition. The dipping of believers into water as a sign of their union with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. And so I want to emphasize four things here. What is baptism? Well, it's the dipping. There's another word for that first than I. Anybody knows? I can't hear anything. <laughs> Immersion. Okay, so in other words, when we, well, how we understand it is Naaman uh, wanted to be cleansed of his leprosy. And so he went to Elisha, and Elisha says, you need to wash yourself in the river. So what did Naaman do? In the Greek Septuagint, he went and baptized himself in the Jordan River. And so we understand it's the dipping, okay? Second, it's the dipping of believers. That's why it's often called believer's baptism, okay? We believe that people believe, and then, out of obedience to follow Christ, they are baptized. Third thing, it's a sign. It's not the reality, okay? But there are some that teach baptism saves, okay? And so what we want to say is, no, baptism, it's a sign that points to a, a reality. Uh, it's, a, it's a visible, physical thing you can see. Can you see, next week, Lord willing, can you see Ellie get baptized? Like, will you see it? It's a physical thing that happens. But, guys, it's not that baptism that, that washes her sin. Are you going to see the sins float off into Lake Santilla? Uh -huh. I mean, the Bible talks about washing away sins. Guys, it's a sign that points to the reality that's already happened in her heart, okay? And can, you can't see that, can you? But God has given us this sign to, to point that. And, 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 and it's a sign that points us to, to something that only God can do, guys. And Dave just referenced to it as well. And that is this, guys. Only God can give eternal life. Only God can wash away sin. Only God can unite us to Jesus. Only God can do these things. And God gives us visible signs, baptism and the Lord's Supper, to be able to build our faith. Okay? Things we can see, but they point to realities of trusting God's promises, guys. Okay? Trusting God's promises. So it builds our faith. That's why they're called ordinances, or if you understand the word correctly, sacraments. I'm not going to get into that. But the point is, is those are things that the church does. So when they... 
Don't sell him. He's not doing it on the authority of his family or the Black Knees or, you know, Graham County. It's, it's a church thing. Now, lastly, then it's a sign, but it's then a sign of what? Of their union with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. And this is, as Baptists, we tend to emphasize this a lot because when you get baptized, you go down. What, what does that kind of look like? Jesus was died and was buried, right? That's the that's the picture of it that we see. And then, woohoo, come up, right? Hopefully that pastor didn't keep it down there. They come up, okay, raised to walk in newness of life. That's the picture that we'll see, Lord willing, next week. And so and we could cheer. Woo! Like that was a good picture. I thought, I don't know the guy, but some guy in Norway. But the point is, the point is. The point is, is that's something that we can see and we can celebrate with Ellie and we can celebrate what God has done in our lives, in our uh, uh, hearts and lives. And so that's the point. It's a sign. So, and, and it references, the Catechism references this passage. Colossians 2, uh, 11 to 12 says, uh, let me see here. Uh, in Him, in Christ, also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Okay, and then it says, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And so that's why we always emphasize, guys, the ordinances okay, have to be connected. They have to have faith. Okay? If you have Dave dunk you without faith, that doesn't get you saved. What does it get you? Wet. That's it. Okay, that's it. You have to have, it has to be connected with faith, okay? And that says it very explicitly. And that faith, then, is a sign that marks you out, okay? And that's what I want to emphasize. I, I hopefully, a reminder for us next week, but I wear this shirt because it marks me out, right? Like, I live in North Carolina, but I don't root for the Carolina Hurricanes, right? I root for the greatest hockey team there ever has, right? Hockey town, the Detroit Red Wings. Okay? This marks me out. Like, people know, yeah, he's not a hurricane fan. Okay? And so the point is, guys, that's what baptism does. It, it's kind of like this. If I take this right here, okay? Now, what is that? It's a can. Now, what's in the can? Peas. Well, it could be corn. Peas. Could be beans. Could be refried beans. I said peas. Peas. Could be, could be a lot of different things, couldn't it? But do you know what's in it? it you don't. Be. Okay, you can't see it. Now, if you put a label on it, I think I got a label in here. Yep. Now do you know what it is? Sliced peaches. Huh? <laughs> Sliced peaches. You put a label on it. So the point is this, guys. Baptism, uh, I talk, here, the purpose of baptism, same thing. Baptism testifies to believers that God has cleansed them from their sins through Jesus Christ. And see, it marks us out as belonging to Jesus. The Bible teaches, guys, there's, there's only two kinds of people in this world. Uh, 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 Pastor Josh talked about it in Sunday school, okay? Uh, the response to when Christ comes back is going to be one of two, and it depends which, which person you are. Are you the seed of the woman or the seed of the serpent? The godly line or the ungodly line? The righteous or the wicked? We bond through Proverbs. The wise and the foolish? Again, Proverbs. Uh, the clean and the unclean, okay? Uh, are, are we still in our sins? Are we unclean? Or have our sins been washed away? Are those who walk by the Spirit and those who walk in the flesh. Revelation, depending how you interpret it, there's those who are sealed by God. God is affected the way they think. Or there's people who are marked by Satan on their foreheads and on their hands. The ways they think and the things they do is dominated by the world. The point is, there's people who belong to Jesus and there's people who belong to Satan. Those are the only two kinds of people in the world. And see, what, what, the, what baptism does is it's people saying, I belong to Jesus. Not because I'm baptized, but because of what he's done for me. And guys, that's glorious. That's worth celebrating, okay? So when we see that, just like Jesus, he called his death a, a baptism, just like Jesus was dead, buried, and then he was raised to walk in newness of life, that's what we as believers are. And that's what the, the passage in Colossians goes on to say. You who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. He's, he's, he's triumphed over our enemies, guys. And so when we see a baptism, it should do, I want to encourage us to make application in two ways. Number one, 
is it ought to encourage us in this world we live in, that there's all this chaos and all this kind of thing. Guys, God is at work changing hearts and lives. And we're going to be reminded of it again when Allie says, God is going to work in my life. And, and her baptism points to now she has a heart that wants to obey Christ in things. That's, that's glorious. That's, that's encouraging. The second thing it ought to do is have us consider in our own lives, if you're baptized, okay, have it be reminded of God's work in your heart and life. Okay? Are you still striving to walk with Him? Are you resting in Him as, as David just prayed? Are, are, we, are we seeking to walk in obedience to Him? Or have we strayed? Uh, prone to wander, we sang earlier. That's all of us. And so we want to strive for that. If you're not baptized, the solution isn't get baptized. If you're not baptized, let it, let it be a reminder to you and say, has God worked in your hearts and lives? And if not, say, recognize your sin. Okay? Turn from your sin. Trust in Christ and realize He makes dead sinners alive. And so let's pray and ask God to give us grace to trust Him and to be encouraged by what the Lord has done in uh, the Wiggins' life and, and what he's doing as they get prepared to disciple another young one coming up uh, next month, Lord willing. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your goodness and grace. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for the gospel that, that Christ has done for us what we cannot do uh, for ourselves. And so we thank you for that. We thank you that you're continually at work in people's hearts and lives all over this world, even in these chaotic times. And so we thank you for that. Uh, help us to trust in you. Help us to depend upon you. And we just pray, Lord, that you would be glorified in our lives. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys.